Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Tuesday, August 18th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So we have two big stories out of Finley today, including a coronavirus outbreak at an assisted living facility, plus a priest who was arrested on sex trafficking charges. But we also got an update today from Governor Mike DeWine on sports in the state. But before we dive too deep into any of these stories, I actually want to get you all caught up on the latest coronavirus data. So Today, there have been 861 new cases of coronavirus reported, and that's compared to the 21-day average of 1,116. In that same time frame, there were 39 coronavirus-related deaths. The 21-day average for the state is at 23, so a bit above there. Both hospitalizations and ICU admissions were up on Tuesday as well, with 117 and 19 reported respectively, and those averages are at just 96 and 15. Governor Mike DeWine also updated his list, ranking all 88 counties in order of those with the most cases per 100,000 to the least. And the good news for Northwest Ohio is that both Lucas and Seneca counties have dropped out of the top 10 list. So Lucas was initially in the number two spot before dropping to fourth and then fifth, and now out of the top 10 completely. So that's really encouraging. And Seneca started in the number 10 spot before climbing up to nine, and then dropping out of that top counties list today. However, Sandusky County unfortunately has crept up into that list coming in today at seventh place. So it is something that we might just wanna keep an eye on. But a big announcement came out of today's presser in terms of sports. DeWine said that both contact and non-contact sports could continue for the fall, but of course with a number of restrictions in place. Now the official order hasn't been released just yet, but we do know that one of the restrictions comes in terms of spectators. DeWine said that only parents and other people very close with an athlete will be allowed to attend, although he said it will be up to each school to define exactly what that means. He said there will also be allowances for people close to students in the band or drill team, etc., to show up in support as well. Basically, the idea is to give people options. Ultimately, it will be up to the individual district and parents to make a decision on what's best for their students and for the community based on what the situation is there. Now, while Lucas seems to be improving, there have been some recent outbreaks in other counties in Northwest Ohio. Defiance County has just reported three outbreaks, two of which have been in long-term care facilities. And staff members at both places apparently reacted immediately. So they're really getting things under control and the county health department is working with them to make sure that the spread is contained. Now the third outbreak was traced back to a private party, which health leaders say seems to be becoming a trend. So they're reminding people just to be cautious when bringing people together, especially in indoor settings, wash your hands frequently, practice social distancing, wear masks when you're not able to keep that distance. And of course, if you feel sick, you should stay home. And Finley is dealing with an outbreak of its own. This one is connected to an assisted living facility. So right now, 12 residents and three staff members have tested positive at the Primrose Retirement Community. Now, leaders with Hancock Public Health have clarified that the outbreak is not inside the nursing home, rather it's within that assisted living facility. So the infected people all have their own apartments and can easily isolate. So the initial patient is actually the only one to be in the hospital so far, so the first one who tested positive. And a health department worker is going to go to Primrose sometime today to make sure that the virus is contained and to help coordinate with testing there. But also in Finley is some very disturbing news. 53-year-old father Michael Zacharias was arrested on Tuesday and is facing a number of federal charges, including sex trafficking of a minor, sex trafficking of an adult by force, fraud or coercion, and coercion or enticement. He was immediately placed on leave by the Diocese of Toledo. According to the complaint, investigators are aware that Zacharias has engaged in sexual conduct with minors since the late 90s. But the diocese said he was ordained as a priest in 2002 and that these are the first such allegations to be raised against him. Now, FBI agent Eric Smith said Zacharias served at other parishes during his time as a priest, including St. Catharines in West Toledo. And agents are encouraging anyone who's had contact with Zacharias where they may have been groomed for possible sexual purposes in the future or inappropriately touched or assaulted to contact the FBI at 
216-622-6842, and that number is on our website. And leaders with the Diocese of Toledo are also encouraging people to report any such allegation to their Victim Assistance Coordinator, and that number is at 419-214-4880, and again, that is on our website as well. And while on administrative leave, Father Zacharias can't exercise public priestly ministry, administer any of the sacraments, wear clerical attire, or present himself as a priest. Now, as a warning, this next story is also an update to a very upsetting story out of our area. Jenna Cisneros has now changed her plea to no contest after initially pleading not guilty in manslaughter charges in her own children's death. As a recap, two babies were found wrapped up in blankets under the dashboard of two different cars years apart. Now, according to court records, DNA evidence has determined that Jenna and Jacob Cisneros were the biological parents of both babies. After changing her plea, the two endangering children charges Jenna Cisneros faces will now merge with two involuntary manslaughter charges. She's going to be sentenced on September 9th. Now, Jacob Cisneros is actually out of jail right now as he awaits his own trial. But let's adjust our scope a little bit here and look at what's happening nationally. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy announced today that he'll push back any changes to the U.S. Postal Service until after the election to avoid even the appearance of any impact on election mail. So the move comes in response to delivery delays and service changes that lawmakers and others warned could cause problems for the November election, especially as mail-in voting is expected to drastically increase during the pandemic. DeJoy is now saying that delivering election mail on time is now the agency's number one priority between now and Election Day. He he said retail hours at post offices will not change and that mail processing equipment and boxes will remain. No facilities will close and overtime will be approved as needed. So if you plan to submit an absentee ballot, you should be okay time-wise, but it's never a bad idea to get out ahead of the game and try and get that done as early as possible. But if you're still a little bit hesitant about using the mail, you can always drop off both your ballot request form and your actual ballot in your county board of elections drop box. So most counties should have those by now and they're totally safe and easy to use. But speaking of voting, today, President Donald Trump pardoned Susan B. Anthony, a leader in the women's suffrage movement, who was arrested for voting back in 1872. Now, Anthony is best known for her role in the movement to secure voting rights for women, but she was also a strong anti-slavery and voting rights pioneer. Now, Trump's pardon comes 100 years after the ratification of the 19th Amendment, which ensured women's right to vote, which is why I have my Votes for Women mug here to commemorate the occasion. The 19th Amendment states that the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Congress passed it in 1919 and the amendment was ratified on this exact day 100 years ago. But it's important to note that the fight for equality didn't end there. It would take decades of fighting for minority women and black Americans to really receive the right to vote. But that is all I have for you today. For more of your top headlines, tune in to WTO 11 at 5, 6, and 11 every night. Plus, you can watch these updates. Just like the video and hit subscribe on our channel so that you can get an alert whenever I hop on here. And if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer. Or you can send us a text at 419-248-1100. But with all of that being said, I hope you get out there and have a happy Tuesday.